This time on Reality Renovision. Our plan to sell the house before Christmas obviously never happened because it's after Christmas. Man, this room is nasty. It has got to go. I mean, it still smells like 1880. Oh. Get that haircut shot, Max. Safety second. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Okay, let's get going. What are we doing? We're going crazy. This For is dust? A, it's a Zamboni, dude. Looks like you took a bite out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so if I did this right, there's no more power in this wire. Alright, let's find out. I don't think this house has had a single permit since 1880. Wow. Hey, shovel? Yes, sir. I'm gonna have to open all this up. This is the fun part. Oh! Woo! Holy crap! <laughs> that seemed dangerous. 800 square feet outdoor living space. <laughs> Perfect every time. Today's episode of Reality Renovision, we are gonna go back to fixing this old bedroom. I can't believe I used to live in here. I mean, it still smells like 1880. Ugh. It's all because of the old wooden floors. Anyway, gotta rip out the closet that I put in for my wife when we first moved here, open up this space, lift up the ceiling. We got a lot of mess to make, but this space is gonna be huge when we're done. Man, this room is nasty. It has got to go. There's nothing here that we can save. We gotta peel off all the drywall. We gotta put in new flooring. We gotta update the electrical, insulation, vapor barrier. <sighs> gotta raise the ceiling. God only knows what's been living in that attic for the last 140 years. So that's all coming down on our heads. It's gonna be one nasty day. That's quite a color, man. Check that out. That was pink before it was green. One extreme to the next. There you go. Get that haircut shot, Max. Yeah? Nate's gonna laugh so hard when he sees this video. <laughs> I did that! My brother was over the other night. We had a few beers. <laughs> COVID blues. And I gave him my clippers because he said he can cut hair. Clearly. Now, now we know he was full clearly of Clearly not with my clippers. <laughs> yeah. Doesn't matter though. It's nice to switch it up once in a while. At least it can't get much worse than this. Okay, right? this uh, that piece is coming. I just punch that off from this side now. Eh? Yeah, that'll work. <laughs> Safety second. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Now you want to just push that through, or? Okay, you got it? Yep. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it, I got it, I got it. I got it. Okay, it's all you. I got so much in my face. <laughs> oh boy. Maybe I don't. I'll just put her here like this. Okay, now close it up to get this to the wall again. There you go, that broke the tape joint for you. Okay, all right. Okay, yep. <sighs> hey, let's try not to do that. What the hell is going on up there? But we never bothered to cut any of the paper, did we? It's what it looks like if you don't cut the corners of your tape joints first before you do the yeah, tape drywall. Yeah, it's off. a lot more of a fight, eh? A little bit. But it's only drywall. Yeah, I've already punched a hole here before, I can tell. Okay, there's only two wires to this. This is the end of the run. No Moretz, right on. Okay, 
All right, so if I did this right, there's no more power in this wire. All right, let's find out. Yep, didn't blow up. <laughs> ah. All right. Okay, so what's it like renovating a 140-year-old home? Dirty. <laughs> That's my first word that comes to mind. It's filthy. It's filthy inside, it's filthy outside. I didn't realize, uh, like this is a new experience for me. Mm. Once you tore down those, the, 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 the drywall and to see what was behind. Yeah. Um, well, it's all layers. Right? Oh, multiple layers. So we get to remove the drywall that was up there in the 70s. Yeah. And then 14 layers of wallpaper. Oh my gosh, yes. And then that's on the plaster that has to go and the lath has to go. And then the ceilings are all layer on layer on layer. The living room had three layers of ceiling. And we took all that off, which I think the floor joists appreciated all that weight gone. <laughs> but there's full of coal dust. I know. It's filthy. We were, we, were, we were black for days just cleaning uh. it up. It was nuts. Yeah. It's dirty. As soon as you start peeling apart an old house, it's just dirty. Like dirt you've never seen before. And you had to reinforce a bunch of joists and Yeah, it's lots of work. And... The work is fine, but it's the dirt. You know, you want to take it all out. And then you want to vacuum everything because you just want to get rid of the dirt. Well, didn't, wasn't there like a smoke stack in the middle yeah, of the well, room? Yeah, well, back in the old days when they built that house, they would have a, um, a coal or wood fireplace mm -hmm. right in the middle of the room. Usually coal was the secret to that. And a uh, big smoke stack. And they would make that part of the room so hot that it would like... To be able to like a, like a radiator. warm up the rest of the room. And, and, and then it would, the heat would go right out to the outside walls, right? To the point where the snow outside the house would melt. That's how hot they had to keep it. Wow. And, uh, yeah, just dust and dust and dust and coal dust and wood burning dust and dirt dust and. Yeah, dust bug upon dust. dust. And oh, yeah. Millions of fly wings. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it was, uh, that was entertaining. Hey, welcome to my bedroom. It's gonna be a bedroom. Ah, this has been a really interesting project. We used to have a closet here, and now we've got a vaulted ceiling, which is awesome. We kept some of the original collar ties just for structure purposes. We installed new collar ties made out of two by 10. We've got some insulation and big barrier going on. The coolest thing about this bedroom now is we're adding 19 feet. We're gonna build in a wall of closets. So six big doors. They're all gonna have their own lighting in there on motion sensor. So that'll be the hers closet. The other side is the his. We're setting this up here so we can have a wall mount fireplace and TV. Nice stone feature. That's gonna be awesome. But today is insulation day. Right, Maddie? Yep. <laughs> we rented the blow-in machine from Home Depot. We got a few bags of fiberglass pink at it cat which is awesome. This is like, this stuff expands 17 times its size. So each one of these bags does 100 square feet at R20. Sure. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill up the flat section of our ceiling. And then we're also gonna blow in over the existing ceiling. Just because if you can see, they added some bats, 
But when you do that, you always have these big void cavity areas that don't get filled right. So we're gonna get the blower going. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, uh, oh, once we got it all insulated, then it's gonna be time to frame. Because we're gonna need just one day to frame this wall, eh? And then we can get this bad boy closed up, start taping. Frame that wall? Well, that was done. We gotta frame the closet. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Never stops. It looks like it's a lot of work, but we're, we're actually getting pretty close. Another couple of weeks, we should have this one done. You push it in and you pull the, the plastic off of the insulation as you're pushing it in, right? Okay, you deserve a knife. <laughs> this should have the power cord and the hose. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. We got to get an extension cord to run this. It's got to be a single end. Seriously though, did I lose one on the trip? If you got an old house like we do, then you're gonna need to know how to use one of these machines. We'll show you all the tips and tricks for getting this done right. Oh, so I'm suggesting that they have a little remote thing here, so when you're working, you can hit the start or stop button on the machine. This is a two-man operation, so you're gonna need an assistant because, well, luck would have it, the battery's dead on the remote. Uh, frustrating. I remember the last time we did this, we didn't read the instructions. It had been so long, we just cut the end off and we tried to push all the insulation out of it. And we, we had a hell of a time. But if you follow the directions, it works pretty easy. Deep into it, kind of like a steak, I guess, and stomp it. So that when you put it in the machine, you can peel back the plastic and it'll go into the machine. Go ahead and turn that thing on. Oh, sorry. There we go. When you get near the end, you just shoot it up into the ceiling and then it'll rain down on your spot. The land is nice and fluffy like. It's almost like a pink Christmas. So in this situation, I've already got an R20 insulation laying on top of some older stuff. So by adding another 16, I'm pretty good, I'm about a 40 here. And it fills in all the gaps in between all of the other bats. And so I finally have a nice layer. Now, let's go show you how to fill up a ceiling cavity with your vapor barrier in place. Okay, let's get going. quite ready for that one. <laughs> yeah. Nice. 
That's why it doesn't look like it's filling very fast, because it's filling a very large area slowly. All right, now as you can see, we're gonna basically just create a mountain of insulation right here, because this is actually an exterior wall now. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put uh, R20 insulation horizontally here, and then we're gonna use a lawn rake to pull the insulation up tight against it. Piece of cake. We'll put in the insulation, staple our plastic halfway across, and this will enable us to have enough fill in the space so that we can back it up and fill all this cavity up so we have a nice continual thermal break. Half a second. Happy New Year. Oh, man. Yo. That's not necessary. Well, I'm just knocking it all yeah, in. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't need my drywall on the ceiling downstairs. I've been blowing off. Do it. OK, we're done. All right. Kill it. Well, now all we got to do is throw some bats in here and put our vapor barrier on this wall because now that's an exterior wall and then we're going to be ready to drywall. Man, this place is coming along real quick. Now that you ripped out so many rooms in the house, what are some of the common mistakes you'll see that people do in a DIY situation with the home? Mm. What is something that you keep seeing reoccur or problems that Well, the most yeah, the most common problem we saw in that house was the wiring. And, and it's everywhere. Like most people think that as long as they put a wire into a box and then they can just put that box anywhere. They miss the point of it needs to be accessible. Um, a lot of times they miss the idea of even using morettes or putting a cover <laughs> plate on it so it doesn't start a fire. And oh, yo, yo, the how amount many, of opportunities for a fire to happen in that house, it blows my mind it's still standing, to be honest with you. How many situations do you think, um, like, could have potentially started a fire in the house? Well, there's a couple of different things. Older homes, a lot of the old wiring doesn't have a ground. No, but so, I mean in our house, the one that we worked on. Well, I know. That's an older home. So how many times? I can't even count. Oh, my God. But a lot of the wires didn't have a ground. So if a mouse or a, or a mm. rat would bite into the wire, which is not uncommon, <laughs> Um, it, it would ignite the sucker and they'd just catch fire. Ugh. Now, depending on how much oxygen is available in the cavity of the wall that gotcha. they're in, yeah. all these other factors, it might burn itself out. Mm. I've seen that before many times. But I, in this particular house, for whatever reason, we only, we only saw a couple of wires that had bite marks in it. I was kind of surprised, mm. pleasantly. But I think I must have pulled out at least 30 junction boxes buried in the ceiling. Oh my yeah. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah, yeah. We have, oh. <laughs> Everybody who's ever been in there just said, oh, there is a box. Put a wire in it. There's yeah. power well, there. How many owners? They're, they treat the that? electrical system in that house like it's a bunch of... Like, you ever seen um, um, that movie with Clark Griswold doing his Christmas tree lights? And he's got all the extension cords? That's how my house was wired. <laughs> Insane. At the end of the day... Uh, we still had good smoking smoke detectors working and we knew how to get out and old houses like that tend to have the capacity to burn for a long time before the structure is at risk um, it's just wood so I really never really too concerned about it my biggest fear was if it did catch fire because we're so far out in the country they'd never get there in time to save the structure yeah. and all my work would go up in flames <laughs> So it's nice to get near the end knowing all the wiring is updated and that it's not going to just sell, you know, combust one day yeah. by accident. Yeah. So at least our investment is safe. But yeah, my family was always safe. If you've ever seen the movie The Patriot there where the, they light the house on fire and then he goes running upstairs and everything is engulfed. Um, and he runs into the bedroom upstairs while the whole house is on fire and he has time to pull out his weapons. And that's a little fictitious because in real life, that second floor would have been completely filled with smoke. But the concept of the fact that it, it burns so long and its you, stairs are still structurally sound, is, it holds true. <laughs> yeah, I've been in a lot of fire damaged homes in my, in my career and uh, it's always the same thing, right? The thing that's the most deadly is the smoke, not the fire. <laughs> We're ready to get back to work. We've had a bit of a break, which was necessary because Matt and I have been busting our butts all summer and all fall, getting this house out, done outside. Now we're in the master bedroom. It's time to close up. I'm just going to walk through this real quick because we are not ripping off all the old exterior walls. 
we're gonna actually cover up all these old walls with 5 8 drywall. So we have two different densities and we have the added benefit of having the fiberglass mesh embedded in the dust. So it's a sound reducing quality. We're trying to get rid of all the road noise on this side of the building. So by adding another layer, it does two things. It gets a nice clean wall and a nice quiet room. Okay, so this is the goal. And then we can talk about all the finishing touches and what we're doing for our closets. All right, Maddie, let's go, buddy. Hey, it's a work day. All right, right to the corner. And then we're just gonna go like this, mark off our cut line, and we're gonna go like this. By marking this area here, I can measure down to the plug and then over from the corner. And then we can roto zip all that out. That's good. And then we'll install that over top of the new drywall. Nice to be home. I know. <laughs> so we moved back in. We're living up in the loft. You guys saw that we did the Murphy bed, and it's actually really quite it comfortable. It is. Oh, I love it. It's so nice and it's, cozy. It's cool. And yeah. you know, it's nice when you're old. You're closer to the ground too. It like, <laughs> doesn't take as much work to get up in the morning. It's nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. Anyway, that's that's good. Uh. That's set aside. So now guys, just to give you an up to date, we're, we're working on the master bedroom. We're resizing the closets, gonna put in some new flooring. Our plan to sell the house before Christmas obviously never happened because it's after Christmas. Uh, we obviously don't even have a fireplace yet. We still can't finish the flooring in this room. It's, it's frustrating. That's okay. You know, I mean, in, in the grand scheme it. of things, yes. I mean, our family's healthy. Oh yeah, that's uh, so true. And uh, hopefully, will hit spring in time for us to get back to our full-time production mode. <laughs> we also have some really cool projects we're going to be doing in the house. So we'll get to that real so soon. Exciting. We'll bring you up to speed because we're starting to get ramped up again. Yeah. Right? Yep. I know. It's exciting. It's going to be a great year. We're actually more excited about the channel this year Absolutely. than last year. Because we're still planning on selling the house, which means we got to get another one. Mm. I know. We got you know, something in the works, we got, right? We got but, a few balls in over juggling, but uh, yeah. we can't make any announcements quite yet. Nope. But uh, I just, I'm excited. I think it's going to be a great year. I'm uber excited. And to be honest with you, <laughs> I'm really loving the laid back approach to renovating right now. Because, you know, you, oh. usually I'd be busting my butt every day, all day. Yeah. We've been doing a lot more time in the office, working on developing things behind the scenes for you guys. And so I'm only working a few hours a day. It's been a good break because <laughs> I I got exhausted last year. Yeah, it was a lot. So last year I was physically exhausted. Yeah. Now I'm just mentally exhausted. <laughs> I'm tired of all the frustration, but you know, everybody has the same thing, so I have no right to complain. Yeah. Um, maybe what we should do is we should go upstairs and we'll show you what's going on, mm. what the plan is, right? Because it's kind of fun. And we're soundproofing that room as well uh, sure. because the house is close to the street. And uh, let's go for a bit of a tour and give you guys some updates. <laughs> hey guys. All right. Welcome to my bedroom. You want to just hold up for two seconds there, guys? Just giving folks an update. This is our bedroom project. We're doing some soundproofing, which is what the extra layer of drywall everywhere is. We're adding brand new closets, okay, because there wasn't enough closet space. The trick here is, is that the closet with the roof is too deep. So now we're putting in a fake wall in behind as well. There's a lot going on. Can't wait to get going on this flooring because we're using a brand new product you're gonna love. It's gonna change the whole DIY flooring industry. It's a click lock hardwood engineered flooring. Anyway, oh, as soon as we get this room done, we'll be able to move on and finish the bathroom. And then it's gonna be time to stick a sign in the front yard because we're getting the hell out of here.
it. I love it. This kind of thing is really simple. In order for me to pull this one flush, I'm going to screw from the back side. I'm just going to create a bit of a gap here. Okay. Now that my nails, my screws caught it, watch this pull nice and flush. And I can control where it finishes off until it is absolutely perfect. This is my life. Making staples at the floor. Why am I using the old one? The new one is so much better. That's what I'm useful for. You want to take the uh, reciprocator there, Maddie, and uh, cut out the plates? All right. Yeah. We'll get this all rolling here. We're shaking the house with this. I need a screw. Can I have that? That's why I'm here, because you haven't fastened the plate yet. There you go. Yes, Dad. This is a new thing I'm working on, you know that? What's that? Yes, Dad. I was wondering why I felt so uncomfortable just now. Now I, now I know why. I'm doing something new. I got a couple screws, uh, a couple screws loose and a couple screws in the floor. Oh, whoa! Oh, oh. How's that for ninja? Yeah, huh? <laughs> Put the screws in the bucket. We're running low, so there's no sense to throwing them all in the garbage when we sweep up tonight. If we sweep up. If we sweep up tonight, I love it. Yeah, I got that piece. Right. Let's save these for the, the headers. Because we're gonna have put some headers in here. Woohoo! Do we have any screws in behind here, Matt? Nope, just in the front? Yeah. I need you to throw a screw on the bottom and on the side, top and bottom. Before we do the bottom place over there, I'm gonna have to do the same thing I did here. So I basically measured, what was it, 26 and a half to this? Yeah. Because I'd rather this gap be straight and then this one change, you know? Definitely. Definitely, definitely. Thank you. Yeah. Wow, that is noisy. There's a quote we can't use. That's great. I try not to encourage that kind of content on my okay, channel. Sorry. <laughs> I have some people on our channel that comment like as if it's a men's locker room from 1960. It's just not working, right? Oh, hey, yeah, that's... And back to foam. That's the way I like it, and it doesn't leak. Now I can drive all that corner. Hey, batter, 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 so we can batter. Oh, take two. It's nasty. Nothing's attached to the damn floor around here. <laughs> it's a floating closet. I thought that's what we were doing. Like from the backside in the middle. There we go. Now we're talking. All right, well, in case you're wondering, that situation there when I'm using the planer, it's very important because we're putting in uh, three double door systems here. So we're gonna have half inch drywall, then door jam, casing. This allows me to have a completely flat surface. So then I'm not gonna have gaps and create issues where the casing won't cover and we have to fill everything caulking and it's gonna look atrocious. So just taking two seconds to run around with the planer, hit all the front edges, knock all the tops off. That gives you a professional result. And then you don't spend the rest of the time trying to correct the problem that was fixed in 10 seconds with mudding and taping and caulking and finished carpentry and just get the right tool for the job. All it's right. Called, so all, uh, it's all part of the job, right? That's it. So now we just uh, got to throw in a couple of headers. Um, double check everything, make sure it's all screwed properly so it doesn't twist. I did it, so we don't have to. Okay. Yeah. That's good to know. It's, it's going to be perfect. 
Enough said. So, uh, <laughs> I'll come back tomorrow and help you put all the drywall on because you're gonna have a couple hours here. Yeah. Well, you're right. I do need to go back and <laughs> just put a more, couple more screws in. I think it's awesome though because when I check this out, like that's, aside from this one, it's all pretty straight. What happened there? No, it's all straight. Maybe this one's got to warp. Maybe this one's got to warp. They all kind of do, but... Yeah, I mean, they're all a little bit kerfuffled. Within the 16th, it's straight. I know, it's tough to work in these old houses with old slopes, because the slope's moving, everything's moving, the floor's moving. Yeah. That's okay. We made this 26 and a half inches, so after drywall, we still have a full 25. Let's check it again, though. I mean, I'm uh, kind of curious <laughs> to see whether the house moving has an effect on that. Uh, specs in time. You measure, and I'll grab the level. It's too tall. Why? That the, is it level? Yeah. Wait a minute. That's reasonable. It's reasonable. And that, that's really what I'm looking for. It's more important that it's all consistent, and it is. Yeah, it's consistently close. The one at the very end is actually Kinda the only. Hard. One. That's what? perfect. Measure from 26 here. Twenty-six and a half. Measure from here. To where? To, thing. to inside. Yeah, because that's the actual dimension. Twenty-six and three quarters. Oh, we're laughing. As long as we have lots of room. Because our cabinets are only going to be 13s. And we just want to have it set up so that the rod, when you put the clothes in, you have enough room for the clothes to hang without, when you close the door, that it's all cramming in and you don't want to have sleeves sticking out from the doors, right? It's just about having that sexy finish, giving it a little extra space. It's amazing what an inch or two will do, especially when you get into the winter coats and clothes, right? Mm -hmm. What are we doing? <laughs> We're going crazy. Uh, I'm here with my knuckleheads here today. We're doing an installation. Yeah, engineered hardwood. This is an amazing product. It doesn't get nailed down. It just gets click locked. <sighs> I just feel like I'm a little ahead of myself putting this flooring in, but I'm out of space. I just don't have any room to store anything anymore. So I'm installing the flooring. I'm gonna put down site protection and then I'm gonna finish all of the taping. Then we're gonna have room to build all of our custom closets. Oh, this is a big project. So another week or so from now, we're actually going to be pretty close to finish. Doesn't look like it right now, but you know, by the end of today, the flooring will be in. I'll have some room. I can get my work done. And uh, yeah, <sighs> we're this close to finishing the farmhouse. Just can't wait to get on to the next project. Water, clean my floor. Okay. And not soaking wet so it, it comes through the ceiling. I'm thinking I'm just gonna Zamboni it. Just, just throw it in the pail, all right, and then wring it out when you pull it out. I want it clean, okay? This is, this is not a bad idea this for dust. A, it's a Zamboni, dude. Yeah, it, it'll get rid of the dust, but it won't get rid of all the mud that becomes dust after time. So I kinda need you to get on your hands and knees and wipe that proper. I'm, I'm glad you're enjoying yourself, but it's totally- This is so satisfying, what It's the fuck? totally ineffective. Look at all the mud that's left. <laughs> Okay, my God. You know, it's gonna be a long day, isn't it? Here, Matt, grab a towel, grab some water. If there's a big <laughs> chunk, use a scraper too. Hands and knees, mate. Dude, this floor looks beautiful. Dude, this floor looks wet, not beautiful. We're gonna do this. It's a classic. <laughs> All right. Feel free to use the scraper if you need to, gentlemen. No, I did. Okay. <laughs> That as he's talking, I'm like going in between his feet while he's talking, and he's like, sure. he's like taking steps up as I'm like, I'm just going. Ee, ee, ee. <laughs> Matt was draining water down my lower back. Okay, I don't need any of this here. I'm gonna do everything to drag dirt away from where we're working. I don't want you keep bringing dirt back in the room and whipping it around. Like, if you're gonna zamboni that, shit, throw it out and drag it away from where we're working, okay? And leave all the dirt behind us. It's actually a really good idea. Okay, so we need a screw like right here. No, 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 too far. Right there, and on a slight angle. Okay, try again. Flip foot. 
Just hit another couple along that side. Yeah, wow. Tick, tick, boom. You're gonna miss my saw guy. I can, wow, that's amazing. We're just gonna lay this over here. First piece is now installed. And it's a click lock, so we're just gonna set it, flush, and then drop it. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put together about three rows and then position it according to that laser level line that we dropped earlier, just to make sure that everything is perfect. This is almost ridiculously easy, man. <laughs> this is crazy, this is hardwood without tools. You wanna make sure you're always staggering your joints. You don't want them any more than six inches close to each other. You won't get unsightly gaps down the road. The manufacturers made it so there's really small and really long pieces. Like why aren't they so all not throwing the, same? the wood in the garbage, dude? And it helps to mix up the, uh, the joint. It makes it look very traditional. It makes it look like actual hardwood. Oh yeah, I see. This is the only thing you need to know is how to cut and measure. Make your mark, you cut it, and then you flip it around to install it. Yeah, he is nuts. Which son are we talking about? Oh, I can't tell the difference between one or the other of these knuckleheads sometimes. Looks like you took a bite out of it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna be installing a door jam. And that's part of the beautiful thing about DIY flooring. You put the flooring down before all your doors, everything looks great when you're done, right? Perfect every time. Take a piece of your baseboard that you're gonna be installing when you're done. I love this stuff because it's three quarter wide and it gives you a really nice profile. You're gonna to wanna to slide it along your wall. And if there's a gap, just adjust your floor until Every angle, everywhere, the flooring is covered with the baseboard. I'll be the brains, you be the brawn. <laughs> I'll be the LeBron. Six inches, dude. Same piece, can, we, can I get a longer one? I've never <laughs> actually installed this stuff before. Sure. Wow, that's cool, man. <sighs> Max, it kind of like, it kind of sets in like any other flooring would on that angle, and then you almost have to like push it down to click, where it feels like it's gonna break, but then it sets. Cool. All right. Yeah, that's freaking odd. Six inches, bud. What's not six inches? The gap of it. Well, you're the one being the brains. Yeah, so well, here you go. Give me the right piece. Here's the six incher. This one's fine. No, it's not six inches. What's the six inches you're talking about? From there to there, that's totally fine. Dad said, Dad said six inches, so. Okay, well, that looks totally fine. That should go here, that's six inches. I'm just saying, dude, he said six inches. Okay, well, you're the one handing me pieces. So then, do the most. Well, they're already in. Well, you can take them out. So we can learn from here, and we're gonna do uh, longer pieces next time for the stretch, okay? That one's not six inches either. You really just wanna see the world burn, don't you? Well, we'll do it the next row, Nate, okay? How about that? You gotta listen to me, though, eh? No. Did you say no? Yeah. <laughs>
we go. Remember, we open it up, get the tongues going, grab one of those. Take the pencil, measure and cut backwards. Ugh. Turn it around. Uh, I thought you wanted to, oh. Turn yeah, it around. You're right, you're right, you're right. My bad. Okay. And it was. Measure this. Mark that and cut it. Pretty sure I cut it long on purpose this time. Well, if you cut it long on purpose, you can always cut it again. Yes, sir. Nothing wrong with cutting it twice. Did it right that time. We also need to cut off the tongue. I don't really have a cutting board here. Man, I'm not a lefty and I cut that better with my left hand. Uh, Dad, what the heck do I do here, buddy? Waiting for your dad to come and show you how to do it. Do, 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 do. Almost perfect every time. Why don't you get the next roll of underpad? It's over there. Let's get this one out. Right? And so we don't have to worry too much about it. Oh no, it's not going to make it. Just square it off. Um, you're mi majoring in the minors. Until you're putting flooring in, there's no sense worrying about that. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I obviously measured that backwards. I measured the gap and then I removed that same gap. <laughs> Uh, all right, back to the drawing board. I gotta cut another great big piece again. Oh. Oh, second time's the charm, I guess, eh? Let's see if I know what I'm doing here. Street cred, okay. <laughs> If you don't know how to use a tool, please don't do it. Stop. You're not making contact with the plate in the wood. All right. Classic. Okay, so as you can see, once you get going, measure and cut. A couple basic tools. You don't need to have a chop saw to do a floor like this. You can do it with a hand saw or a skill saw, a jigsaw. Just make sure you're using sharp blades so that uh, the tools work and you're not wasting your time. Man, there's just something about sweeping that just love to clean. Now listen guys, we are almost done this room. I got 30% left. Uh, won't take too long. And then just finish the mud and paint. I'm so excited because we're also got the fireplace going on downstairs. We're almost done the living room. It's gonna be mind blowing the transformation of this house. Next time on Reality Renovation. It's a little nostalgic because I grew up renovating century homes. Yeah, you did. Hey, look at this. I found my oh, hearing protection. After 30 years. She can check this out because, you know, she hasn't seen the floor. I need to know if it's going to be all right. What do you think? Ah! You can finish off the rest of the room? <laughs> <laughs> Your shoe might start leaking. Yeah. That's why I have to take right. it out. Are you serious? You're not, like, standing on a, what is it, at least a little short one? Yeah. <laughs>